Hello, amazing students. I'm back, Mr. Massimino, with another chapter from Seed Folks by Paul Fleischman. It's a realistic fiction story about um, several community members who live um, near or around a uh, vacant lot and um, how they view that vacant lot and um, their interactions with it. We so far have learned about Kim and about Anna. And today we're going to read about this gentleman named Wendell. And I've noticed so far a pattern. Every one of our chapters has a picture of the character and also a little sketch of an object. In our last chapter, we had Anna who had a sketch of binoculars. Think to yourself what this is a sketch of. To me, it looks like um, what we call a pitcher or a container that holds liquid. I'm curious what kind of liquid Wendell might have in it. Wendell, my phone doesn't ring much, which suits me fine. That's how I got the news about our boy shot dead like a dog in the street. And the word last year about my wife's car wreck I can't hear a phone and not jerk inside. When Anna called, I was still asleep. Phone calls that wake me up are the worst. Get up here quick, she says. I live on the ground floor and watch out for her a little. We're the only white people left in the building. I ran upstairs. I couldn't tell it was serious. I prayed I wouldn't find her dead. When I got there, she looked perfectly fine. She dragged me over to the window. Look down there, she says. They're dying. What, I yelled back. The plants, she, yet, she says. I was so mad. She gave me some binoculars and told me all about the Chinese girl. I found the plants and got them in focus. There were four of them in a row. Still little, they were wilted and leaves flopping flat on the ground. What are they, she asked. Some kind of beans. I grew up on a little farm in Kentucky. But she planted them way too early. She's lucky those seeds even came up. But they did, said Anna, and it's up to us to save them. So I just built a connection from the story. I'm pausing. The person on the phone that called Wendell was Anna, our character from the last chapter. And what we know about Anna is she likes to look out her window and use her binoculars. It was a weekend in May and hot. You'd have thought that those beans were hers. They needed water, especially in that heat. She said that girl hadn't come in four days. Sick, probably, or gone out of town. Anna had twisted her ankle and couldn't manage the stairs. She pointed to a pitcher, fill that up, and soak them good. Quick now. School janitors take too much bossing all week to listen to an extra helping on weekends. I stared at her one long moment and then took my time about filling the pitcher. So we learned a little bit about Wendell. Wendell works as a school uh, custodian, helping keep the school clean and organized. I walked down the stairs and into the lot and found the girl's plants. You don't plant beans till the weather's hot. Then I saw what had kept her seeds from freezing. The refrigerator in front of them had bounced the sunlight back onto the soil, heating it up like an oven. I bent down and gave the dirt a feel. It was hard packed and light colored. I studied the plants. The leaves were shaped like spades in a deck of cards. Definitely beans. I scraped up a ring of dirt around the first plant to hold the water in any rain that fell. I picked up the pitcher and poured the water slowly. Then I heard something move and spun around. The girl was there. 
stone still. That means like standing like a statue. 10 feet away, holding her own jar of water. That reminds me of back in Anna's chapter. She hadn't seen me behind the refrigerator. She looked afraid for her life. Maybe she thought I'd jump up and grab her. I gave her a smile and showed her that I was just giving the, her plants some water. This made her eyes go even bigger. I stood slowly and backed away. I smiled again. She watched me leave, and we never spoke one word. I walked back there that evening and checked on the beans. They'd picked themselves up and were looking fine. I saw that she'd made a circle of dirt around the other three plants. Out of nowhere, the words from the Bible came into my head. And a little child shall lead them. I didn't know why at first. Then I did. There's plenty about my life I can't change. Can't bring the dead back to life on this earth. Can't make the world loving and kind. Can't change myself into a millionaire. But a patch of ground in this trashy lot, I can change that. Can change it big. Better to put my time into that than moaning about the other all day. That little grammar school girl showed me that. The lot had buildings on three sides. I walked around and picked myself out a spot that wouldn't be shaded too much. I dragged the garbage off to the side and tossed out the biggest pieces of broken glass. I looked over my plot, squatted down, and fingered the soil a while. That Monday, I brought a shovel home from work. Hmm. And that's the end of our chapter with Wendell. And it leaves me with some wonders because one strategy that readers use is thinking about the story by having wonders. And when we have wonders, it makes us want to know what happens. So I'm kind of wondering what Wendell's preparing to do and what he's going to do with the shovel. All right. Well, until next time, I'll see you later.